What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. I'm still a bit sick, which is why I don't have a face cam on. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all getting P1s and criticals like no tomorrow. I hope it's raining cash your way. If it's not, if you don't know how to hunt, if you have some problems, if you're stuck, this video is for you, so keep on watching, people. Uh, this is an amazing hacker called Catton P19, and he made a repository for us. And he's not the only one; a lot of people have contributed to this. So, um, if we scroll down all the way, you will see who contributed. Thank you very much, everybody who did this. This is an amazing list. We're going to go over it real quick and give you guys some methodologies that you can try. So say you're hacking a target and you're stuck. You don't know what to test for. Well, this list is exactly for you because here we go. First things first, he talks about account takeover methodologies. And here you can find a couple of methodologies like uh, cross-site scripting, chain into a loop, impact bugs, CSRF, um, password reset these are all methodologies if you open one of them you can see what's required how to do it um, and it's really really interesting all of these uh, account takeovers now the next thing you can test for is application level DOS now not all targets accept denial of service attacks so be very careful that you read the scope very carefully Authentication bypass, one-time password bypass. These are really cool techniques. By the way, I'm going to possibly pull, make a pull request for this because I have some really cool ideas for this as well. Um, this one is OTP bypass via uh, on-register account via response manipulation. This is a really cool one. I would highly recommend that you guys read this one and try to understand it as well. We're quickly going to go over it. So you're going to register your account with a mobile number and register and request for one-time password. You're going to get the incorrect one-time password entered and you're going to capture that request in Burp Suite. You intercept the response to the request. So you made the request, you put it forward, then you take the response from that request um, and the response will be like this verification status false mobile and then the number and a profile ID change the response to verification status equals true so basically what you're doing is you're manipulating a hidden field this is a really interesting one there might be a field in the response uh, if you forward that response so Usually there, there will be two calls, so there will be the first call, which will make a request and have a response. And then the second call will use that response to do other things and you can manipulate it. Um, this is an account takeover and it's really cool, really interesting. Try to understand it, try to read it for yourself if you didn't understand it, because that's what I want to try and teach you guys, to go out of your way to find new things. Now the next thing is broken link hijacking, there's just one because it's basically, there is no other things. That overflow has a really cool research on this as well. Pretty awesome what that overflow does for us. I'll make another video about that real soon. Now back to the repository. The next one we have is broken authentication and session management. This is also a pretty cool one, only one in here, but the bug is pretty cool. I highly recommend that you go through this yourself. It's a bit long to go through in the video, but all of these links, like this link, how to hunt, is going to be in the description below. Thanks again, Katan P19. Really awesome that you did this for us. I cannot thank you enough, and I really appreciate it. The next one is bypassing CSP. Uh, this is also just one, but also, again, really interesting. Now, CMSs, there are many different CMSs. And here is only WordPress. If you guys have any idea of how to improve this list, please do make a pull request because people like uh, Catan P19, I'm pretty sure they are open to pull requests and to, to expand this awesome library of attack methodologies. You know, every time I'm stuck and I don't know what to do, I go back to here. So it's really interesting for me and 
I really hope that he keeps updating it because there are so much more techniques that you can try. There are some cool mind maps in here. This is for CSRF, so they made some really awesome mind maps or they found them online. Really freaking awesome. Thank you for doing that. I would highly recommend again that you guys to go through that. This whole list is recommended course, of course. Course has two course bypass, of course, and then you have the normal course. Now, if we go back to CSRF, we've done that one. CVE is pretty cool. They use easy CVE for that. Um, so the tools they use is Google, Twitter, and Nuclei. Uh, and the steps they do is they grab the subdomains. They grab the alive subdomains. So they check which subdomains are actually doing something and are alive. They run Nuclei-based detection panels, workflows, CVE templates differently and store the results in a different file. And then they read each output carefully with patience. Of course, this is very important. You can run as many tools as you want, but you have to go through all of the outputs and you have to read all of them. You might miss something if you don't, and it's very important that you do. Um, if you find some interesting tag being used, like Jira, for example, you will put that link in the browser and check the version. Uh, if the version is something that is interesting, they basically take the version number, they go to Google, and then they look if there are exploits. I usually just use ExploitDB because ExploitDB always has a proof of concept, and sometimes there's not a proof of concept for other CVEs. In there, it's possible that there is not, but um, for some CVEs, it's really hard to find the proof of concept. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Then they grab the CVEs, they go to Twitter and then they explore tab search uh, CVEs, the ones that found were found from Google, uh, and then they go to Google and put the CVE or some details grabbed from Twitter for a better poke, and they try all of those CVEs, of course. If one of those CVEs is successful, if they have a POC that works, of course they're going to report it. So thank you very much for that. Verdux Hunter, if anybody likes this, please follow him. He's also really cool. Now on to the next one. We were at CVE, so we have checklist. We have a web application pen testing checklist.md. This is one I really, really like because it's really expensive. Expansive, that is. So it takes you from recon on a wildcard domain, single domain to HTML5 all the way. Even business logic in here. This is freaking awesome, guys. This list is amazing. Test for feature misuse, test for lack of non reputation, test for trust relationships, integrity of data, test for segregation of duties. It's amazing what's in here, you know. If you're ever stuck, this is the place to go. Checklists and then web application test. There's another one by Shintan Guru. Sorry, Chintan Gurachar. Sorry if I butchered your name there. But this is also a pretty good one. I really like this one. This is also a checklist you can use while you're hunting. It's also quite expensive again. So there are a lot of things that you can try. Um, and he lists them all, which is amazing. Thank you so much for putting all of this effort in. All of these researchers should be thanked personally you know it's amazing what they can achieve when they work together these checklists are amazing they are basically like more than a start if you guys like my basic methodology videos go check those out they are freaking amazing one day we'll go over them so then you have code reviews that one is less uh, relevant for penetration testers of course you have geodata if there is any geodata that's really cool file upload bypass this is also a good one if you ever wonder how does file bypass work again that might happen you know for me it happens quite a lot if you're ever wondering this is the one this is the resource that you can go back to because I always do that as well no, then we have find origin IP. This is also interesting, but it's more like recon -y and I don't do much recon. HTTP desync is also available. Um, not much to say about that, really. 
the host headers is pretty cool because this one explains what each of the headers does uh, and how we can manipulate it this is pretty cool uh, again because I would highly recommend that you read these because um, it's important that you get the basics right you know you need to know what your headers are doing what they are if you come across them in the wild you need to have a very solid foundation before you start building your house if you build your house on sand it's going to collapse within a few years you know what i'm saying so this one is my favorite one i think idors pretty much i really love idors and he gives you quite a few unique techniques that you can try for idors so really cool thank you very much for that harsha that's a really good one now we have jwt this one is one that i need to make more effort into attacking there are some easy JWT attack methods that you can try. So basically just create an account, inspect the token, base64 decode the header. If any kit equals parameter uh, are there, so you can find some bugs. Using that parameter, you can also find directory traversal. Change that kit equals parameter with your directory traversal payload. Change the payload to user as admin. Create a Python script to generate an exploit token and put that token and reload the page. Thank you for that easy JWT hacking method there. Sorry, going to quickly look at the name again. Oh God. <laughs> Kasha Dali, Kasha Dali 10. Thank you very much for that. And now we have the JWT attack methods. This is a really good one because it takes you through what JWT is, what it does. And if you want to attack anything, like it doesn't matter what kind of technology it is. Let's say we're talking about JWT here. You want to attack JWT. The first freaking thing you should do is go to JWT to Google and see what happens, you know, see what happens in here, like JSON web token. Okay, what does the JSON web token do? How does it work? I really want to know, like, that's very, very important that you know how JWT token works before you start attacking it. Same goes for IDORs. You really need to thoroughly understand how an application works and how it talks to its API to know if it's if something is vulnerable or not to uh, IDORs. So basically what I'm trying to say is anytime you want to attack something new it's very important that you first of all go learn about that topic and then you can move on then there's also the MFA bypass the multi-factor authentication of course I really like multi-factor authentication bypass this is really cool because like it's a security feature but it's also like really dumb if it's this is something that's supposed to protect your account really really thoroughly and if it fails that's pretty messed up you know for the misconfigurations there's also one file default credentials and admin panel thank you very much for writing that for us and then we will move on what is next this is one i also need to pay a lot more attention to i need to do a lot more work around because i don't know a whole lot around that we have an open redirect this is also something you can test for and by the way guys if there's something you see in here like the open redirect and there is not a whole lot of information available just google it you know open redirect and see what happens if you know just try to find some information about it this is what hacking is all about and if you are a good person and you really want to add to the community you can also create a pull request of course for this one so uh, on to the next one that we had we had open redirect parameter pollution is a pretty cool one I really like this one um, so read it because it's really important that you know the basics of this and then go to Google and try to understand it a lot better than you do right now even after reading this you know um, try to understand it very very thoroughly and then go and look for exploits you know password reset functionality is pretty cool 
they have some boss or preset token leakage in there and then they have some mind maps again thank you very much for creating all of this then we go on to uh let's see here rate limiting this is also something that's pretty important but not all programs are going to accept this so again read your out of scope very thoroughly guys for recon there's subdomain enumeration as you can see here passive active and permutation uh, they explain what each of them are and of course if you're not allowed to use uh, an active tool then you have to use a passive tool um, active tools are basically going to interact with your target um, so that can be very important there now on to the next one we have SQL injection this is also really cool I need to spend a lot more time learning about SQL injection I really do I'm not good at it at all SQL injection is one of my weakest points because I'm I really don't like SQL I don't like databases I don't know why I always hated them but here we are uh, onto SSRF we have blind SSRF here and normal SSRF blind SSRF is almost never worth reporting um, an SSRF it can be worth reporting but it needs to be impactful so always keep that in mind with anything that you report it needs to be very impactful before it actually gets accepted and also some things might be valuable for some companies but some things might not be valuable for other companies you know what I'm saying so it's very important there now onto sensitive information leaks you can try github dorks this is a pretty real cool one there you can try github recon this is uh, let's see here this is also pretty cool check this out and then google dorks this is also pretty cool uh, you can try all of these google dorks if you're stuck and you don't know where to get more subdomains then you have tab napping this is also pretty cool i didn't even know this one existed until i saw this list so thank you very much for writing this one um, we can also test for WAF bypass so if you encounter a web application filter you have some methods to bypass it thank you very much for that verdux hunter so uh, on to the next one week password protection policy this is almost never accepted or always as a low at least on the platforms that i hack on maybe hacker one and buck crowd might be different but these are not accepted uh, on the platforms that i hunt on uh, and you can see why as well because it's not very important you know then we have cross-site scripting something i really like uh, a little bit lacking but there is pretty good explanation of what everything is thank you very much for quoting me there this is a pretty good like comprehensive guide of what is available you might want to get very intense into cross-site scripting but this is not a place to get very advanced of course you need to do your own research as well this is really cool thank you very much for making this for us and then we have the last one xxe and this is also really cool um, xxe is one of my favorite vulnerabilities as you can see um, as long as the application consists of a zip you can basically uh, i mean uh, of course not a zip uh, an xml you can basically try and hack it like docx um, you can see the svg is made of xml so you can try to hack those with xxd as well try to google that um, and that's what i mean by i might add some more things but this list is amazing if you guys find any bounties based on this list please consider buying the creators a coffee because they spend hours working on this for you guys you guys are amazing if you made it this far thank you very 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 much for watching i would highly appreciate a like and i'll see you in the next one baby love you all